Reflect back on your past, the times when recess was in the middle of your school day and everyone was rambunctious. Remember the game Pretend, or Playing House? Everyone would take a role and act out to the best of their child minds. Eventually there would be a conflict in power and one child would come up for some insane reason as to why they were stronger than the other. My guy can teleport! Well, my guy can teleport and is invincible! My guy was born on Mars 500 years ago and can teleport into your teleports, yada yada yada, you get it. So on and so forth. Looking back on the scenario, it's understandable why our actual literature and characters aren't anything like our juvenile stories. Bullshit. Enter Stranger of Paradise, with its world of mishmashed various Final Fantasy locations despite being a retelling of the first game, and protagonist who is quite literally a cutscene skipper. Jack Garland has set the tone of every trailer of this game, disrespectfully interacting with every character of the world and hyper-focusing on killing chaos. There's nothing else shown of him so far. Check out his wiki page. It's literally empty. Usually by this point in the game's promotion, some personality tropes or goals or backstory would be established, even if not in full to save some for the game, but currently he's just a man who wants to kill chaos. It sounds like a meme, but it's true. There's nothing else to analyze or take in from his actions, and he's supposed to be selling us on this world and its despair. He really does not care to interact with it at all besides killing chaos. While this might be a sign of his character starting shallow and becoming depthful, sensitive, caring, Kinda like how Cloud was in Final Fantasy VII, the original one. The developers confirmed they weren't really expecting people to react to Jack in the way they did with his memes. Quote, We didn't really think it was going to cost it as quite as much of a reaction as it did, and that was a little bit unexpected. It's obviously not something we were terribly pleased about, but I think looking back on it from where we are now, it may have had a slight positive impact if it got people interested. From our point of view, it's better than nobody paying attention. This means that the game was written unaware of how much the protagonist sucks and is going to be an amazing, Horrendous adventure. How could the scriptwriters be unaware how silly this is? When introducing a story, the best thing to do is establish a world and get the player interested in it, not dissuade them by having some nonsensical banter between the characters. Not only that, the world itself makes no sense. How are you realistically going to tie in Sastasha, one of the first dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV, in a cave or some shit? The Shinra building, the place where you go inside to go through near the reactor and you see all these like weird tubes and Hojo teases you in the remake at that point, and Final Fantasy 1's world, a big medieval place, together. The only reason I can imagine breaking logic to fit in more dungeons that have no correlation is because it's fun in their minds. In fact, breaking normality is kind of fun, so you know what? Hang on a second. Hi, I'm here now. Why? Because it makes the video more fun, you know? Like, this whole video has just been video, but like the game's world, what if we just mishmash live action into the video now? It's fun? I'm here? I'm not taking this video very seriously anymore. So you all know that one Final Fantasy game with the really weird designs it takes place in like a Pacific Islander kind of place. Final Fantasy X with scenes like uh, like this. <laughs> Characters who dress like this. And hairstyles like this. You don't wanna know why I can be able to take that seriously versus two seriously angry fucking dads and their salmon pink hair obsessed prompto looking ass son? Final Fantasy X with its weird animations, oddly placed cutscenes, often odd audio mixing, and battles of a system that makes absolutely no sense when you're actually looking at it. Seriously, they just stand there and they, they just shake around in place and it's like just hit a dude. I can take it more seriously because it passes the benchmarks having basic presentational skills in a world that is written for you to respect it. Titus isn't making fun of the people's struggles. He has his own, but he doesn't, you know, go like, oh, fuck you, Xanarkin people, or whatever. What team was walking on? Whatever. He's not like, oh, Blitzball, fuck Blitzball. That's stupid. Just show me where Jack is. Fuck you, I can fight you. Oh, shit. Now imagine if, uh, now imagine if Final Fantasy X's plot was actually about to it was about Titus' hatred and anger towards his father, Jet. Would that make the plot worse? Of course it would make it worse. It would run out the rest of the story in metrosexual Zoomer angst. You wouldn't care about Yuna's Baroque passage, Seymour's obsession with death. You wouldn't care about any of the writing of this place either. You'd just be keeping track in your head about how many times, I hate you, Dad, would be uttered. Speaking of, come over here. Come, come here, come, come fucking over. Come here, look at this. Look at this. I wrote the word holy fuck in the script. Also, I'm gonna be real with y'all, y'all. I'm just sorry that I look so fucking fat in those tight ass workout clothes I put on for a joke. I don't know why I look like I'm 300 pounds on the camera. I'm like 240, 
60. I even put the Ram zip fit on for this scene. See, the front camera makes me look a little more normal. What the fuck is up with... You gotta trust me with what I'm... Look me in the eye. Tell me you trust me. Okay, I'm getting distracted. Back... What's the next paragraph? Uh, anyways, anyways yeah, yeah, the, the game game's a mess, a mess in the dialogue department. But what about the world? Let's take a look at how some of the other games have handled their multiverse-esque adventures. Record Keeper has you jump into a painting, which is fair. It doesn't affect the actual world of the library the world of Record Keeper takes place in. The city has small arenas based off each fighter's world. They're not explained or acknowledged by anyone, but since the characters move freely between them without issue, it's clear the world is full of these, but they can be traversed between to reach the actual barren land that the city games take place in. Midgar is not in the actual Dissidia world and it's not affecting anybody in, in any way. World of Final Fantasy takes place in a storybook called World called Grimoire. For a majority of the game, original Earth and natural locations are used. Whenever location from the Final Fantasy games is used, it's changed if necessary to fit the surrounding area or plot points. Later on, when locations that take inspiration from more mechanical or industrial locations from Final Fantasy are used, they're sectioned off or suddenly dropped in as a sign of a corruptive force. Despite each area contrasting each other heavily, it's handled with some sort of intention with the story to make it believable. That's true for all four of these games. There's a reason why so many areas can coexist, and it also explains why the industrial sci-fi areas don't consume the pure loamy areas. They also all take place in completely original worlds, which Strange Air Paradise can't say it has going for it. With conversational flow being completely out of the window, Strange Air Paradise is not giving me any sort of help in explaining how all these different locations are going to mishmash together in this Dungeons and Dragons inspired world. Either way, I'm kind of glad we're getting this, you know? It's like a one-off thing from the PS2 era when they were figuring out 3D games, that kind of writing. Kind of like the Bouncer. Maybe I'll talk about that one day. The Bouncer 2. That's what I'll call Stranger of Paradise. But at the end of the day, regardless of all the insane, zany, or terrible story writing we're getting, it's going to be a fun game. I'm not saying to disown it, to ignore it, or to forget about it and just throw it away and cancel your pre-order. I'm just making some fun observations on how crazy the presentation of this game is going to end up being. The game actually has a demo out, I might try it, and maybe my thoughts will change. Though I highly doubt that happening. Combat seems super duper fun, the environments look really interesting to navigate, and I think that's what they're trying to aim for, and what they're going to succeed in with this game. Love with your soul and listen to your gut, and I hope to see you here again soon. Bye!